Good morning, guys. So, I just wanted to give you a, a quick little video here um, while we're waiting for our jack o' lanterns to dry um, to become leather hard before we can cut them open. A um, couple things that you can do in the meantime. So, I've got mine sitting here. I'll move this one hopefully a little bit closer. So this is the first one I started. I've been doing one for each period that I have ceramics. And I did go ahead and I continued pushing in with the rib tool, sponging in between um, the lines that I pushed in or impressed into the clay. And then I went ahead and did the same thing on the bottom. I don't roll all the way to the bottom. I like a nice flat spot there um, for you guys to be able to put your names and the periods on. Also, it keeps the glaze from running down when they get fired. Um, but I did round off the edges so it would look nice and natural. So um, I also made my stem and I cross hatched and slipped my stem on. So at this point, while we're waiting for it to get leather hard um, in order to cut it open, we can go ahead and draw out where our lid is going to go and also we can draw out the design of our face. So to draw out where our lid is going to go, you can use the sharp tip of a pencil, you can use your needle tool, you can use the tip of a knife, whatever you might have um, that's just a nice little point. We don't want to draw deep into the clay, um, but we just want to draw lightly on there. So what you're going to do is try and put the line for your lid just on the start of this curve or the crest here of the curve. Don't put it too high up in the middle. If you cut too small of an opening, you can't get your hand down inside to put a tea light or a little votive candle. Um, if you cut it way out on the edge, it takes up space from you doing your face design. And also, then your lid kind of sits on top and it can slide off more easily. Um, so right on this curve where it's large enough to get a tea light down inside, but not so big that it's gonna take up um, space from where you carve out the, your design for your face. So what I like to do is kind of think of it as instead of me moving my arm trying to draw the circle, I try to hold my arm stationary or my hand and turn the pumpkin instead. So if I put my elbow in at my side and hold my hand steady here, then I pick my point where I want to start, where I think your, the lid should be, and then I will go ahead and hold the needle tool there, trying to hold my hand and my arm against my side nice and steady, and then I will go ahead and just turn the pumpkin gently and slowly and let it just make a little line on top of the pumpkin. And typically, if I'm real steady with my hand, then I will come back right where I started so that um, I get a fairly decent circle. Um, now that, after looking at it, hmm, I'm trying to decide. I may draw one just outside of that. I think I should have made it a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move out about an eighth of an inch from there. And what I can do in, is I'll just take my finger and a moist sponge and I'll sponge over the first line. Um, it's okay if you mess up or if you change your mind. You can just, since the clay is soft, just sponge right back over it. So I like the outer line better. It's gonna give me a little bit more room to get down inside. So after I go ahead and I draw that, what I like to do on mine, and I'll hold one up here, hopefully you can see, I put a little tooth or a little notch in the back side of it. And that just lets me know where my lid is gonna fit. Without that, it tends to spin around and I'm not sure where it fits on after I've cut it open. Um, again, just a little tooth or a little notch there. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and look at it first and decide where I think it looks best and which angle I think I wanna cut the face out on. So once I decide that, then I'll put the tooth on the opposite side of wherever that is. So I'm just turning, thinking about where I might wanna put the face. Um, and then what I'll do is on that opposite side, just take my needle tool, try to hold this where you can see, and I will just go ahead and draw a little square tooth there, so to speak. Don't make it too tiny, because 
we want it to be enough that it fits in there substantially and we can get in and clean it out a little bit. So then I'll go ahead and I'll just smear the line off so that it reminds me when I go to cut this open, I want to cut around that tooth first and then cut it so that I don't end up forgetting about it and just cutting through. Now if you don't want the tooth, what you could do is just do the regular circle, take the back side of your needle tool or pencil or some object, press in and make an impression here on underneath your circle and then also on the lid or the inside the circle. That way you know if you line up where those two dots are, that's where your lid, lid will fit. Some people do just a simple line or you could do an arrow, um, whatever your preference is. I like doing the impressions just because it's easier to see. So then at this point, just go ahead and take your needle tool, your pencil, whatever you're working with and lightly sketch out the design of your face. Um, if you mess up, take your sponge, sponge back over it or use your finger and then redraw it. Okay, a um, couple things I would suggest when you're making your face, move at least, this one's a little close, I would say at least a half inch from the top of where you cut your lid open. If you get too close to the edge of where you cut your lid open, what happens is when the clay dries and shrinks, you'll get cracks there. Sometimes it'll actually split open. So you don't want to give yourself that situation to have to deal with. So drop, if you can, about a half inch down from the top of your opening from where you cut your lid um, to start your face. The same thing on the bottom up, I would go about a half inch. Leave yourself a cushion of a half inch both ways. The reason being is if you um, put it too far to the bottom, sometimes it seems like the candlelight doesn't catch uh, and shine through there. Um, so I just think it's a little bit of a, a nicer look when it comes up from the bottom about a half inch, comes down from the top about a half inch. Um, if you want to go a little more than that, that's fine, but don't get too close to that top edge because like I say, you'll end up getting cracks through here. Um, also, try to keep your cutouts, what do I want to say, minimal in size. Don't make big giant designs where it's really open um, because then you look through and you see straight into the candle instead of seeing the design of the face. And try not to be too intricate either and cut where you're too close to another cutout because um, it'll weaken the structure and like I say, you might risk getting cracks there or it might just be weak and it'll end up breaking and pushing in there. Um, then when you handle them, always be careful. Try to handle them and hold them, not on the face, but on the outside of the face. Um, and as you're cutting them, when we get to that point, always keep your hand on top of the lid or take the lid off first. I've seen a number of students in the past that are really proud of their work. They pick it up they tip to show their friends, they tip it, or they turn it over to put their name on the bottom for getting to keep their hand over the lid. The lid falls off, hits the table or the floor, puts a big ding in it. You can never get it to line up and match again. Um, so when we get to that point, you want to be super careful. But for now, just go ahead, draw out your lid, put your tooth on it or your impressions where you want it to line up, um, and then also draw out your face. And at this point, we're just waiting for these to dry and get leather hard. Once they're leather hard, we'll cut them so that the lid will hold its shape and it won't change, so we'll know that it'll always match up when we put it back on. So at this point, just be patient, okay? Um, be able to cut these hopefully in one more day. We'll make a video and we'll post that up and we'll show you what we do when we cut them and how we clean out the inside and then how we clean up the face as well. All right, we'll see you on the next one.